What is up guys, World War 2 model guy here and today we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the, uh, the Italieri AS51 Horse and Mark 1 with British Paratroopers. So this is set number 1356 uh, model kit, 172nd scale and contains 13 hard plastic multi-pose figures and the decals were from are uh, all from Operation Tonga Pegasus Bridge Gliders. So this is a 75th anniversary D-Day gift, so it's basically one year old. Uh, so it's a 1944 to 2019 kit, which is pretty cool. I really like the design of it. It is very nice and it's from Italieri. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the top. So it's got the what the decals are going to look like, the age restriction. So this kit is for for model builders who are 14 and over this can be recycled and yeah you got some uh qr code for some reason um and then there is the stickers which is pretty nice then this is what the glider should look like and then there will be 13 hard plastic multi-pose figures yeah so uh, on the underside we got uh what the glider was uh the length of the of the kit which is going to be in 18.3 centimeters and some more d-day kits so that's the pegasus bridge airborne assault kit where you get a mdf laser cutted uh pegasus bridge Bri uh, german infantry and a kubel wagen and opal blitz and some anti-aircraft kit uh and anti-aircraft guns and anti-tank guns so yeah, it's pretty nice. Let's uh, so we've looked at the box, we reviewed the box. Now let's review the kit. So it is a very nice kit. Um, uh, I've got some pros and cons about this kit. Uh, in specifically, so yeah, let's go and take a look at it. So firstly, they are very very detailed figures, and the glider is absolutely amazing. I mean, I this is my first glider, and I think it is. A very good um, a very good model indeed um, so let's just go for the pros first uh, so the pros are that the kit was easy to assemble uh, and I really like it It was very detailed on the inside uh, but I didn't want to use the inside I just basically didn't put any seats in it because it's gonna be a closed-off aircraft uh, so there's no point in it um, the figures were absolutely brilliant. I mean, a, a lot of them were a few. A lot of them were repeats. So um, these guys, these guys were repeats as well as these guys here. Um, you got a radio man, which is very nice, and a commander, which is pretty nice as well. We also got a soldier crouching, oh sorry, uh, we got a soldier crouching down and he's got a Piet anti-tank gun. I'll leave a link in the description uh, from Simple History. They explain the Piet in more detail, but I can just tell you it's an anti-aircraft gun. That's all I know. So yeah, um, this is not a pro and con, but uh, two of the figures are actually the same thing as the Airfix 132nd scale British paratroopers. So, if anyone's bought the FX 132nd scale British paratroopers, these are basically the same, but apart from, uh, but apart from that, it's just small. It's just minimized or smallened. I'm not sure. Just, uh, I'm not sure. However, the uh, the decals were another pro was that the decals were absolutely brilliant. If you look at that, it was conformed to the. Uh, the wing lines and and as well as well as the D Day uh, the D Day stripes um it is it, stuck to it as well. I didn't even need gloss varnish onto that. But yeah. Um. Apart from the but uh, let's compare it to the Airfix D Day stripes. The the Airfix D Day stripes were absolutely horrendous when I built the new one, the two thousand and nineteen uh. Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B in 172nd scale. Um, it was absolutely terrible. It took me a long time. Basically, most of the, the most of the time I built it was just on the D-Day stripes. That's it. Um, so, uh, so let's go. Uh, yeah. So um, the painting scheme was absolutely brilliant, and yeah, there was a lot of detail in the cockpit as well. Uh, but I just closed it off with the canopy. However, there was a few downsides with the kit. Uh, so, for example, 
Uh, let me just move this figure out. Um, this sticker here, the PF791, uh, it was rolling around a lot and it was coming off, uh, same as this roundel here. So I just used, uh, and this decal here and here. So I just basically um, uh, applied gloss varnish onto it and it sealed the kit as well. Um, another downside was these two. Yeah, um... Uh, there's two there's two things regarding these ones firstly um this is a united states paratrooper uh used in the second world war and i did a bit of history and these types of soldiers were not used during uh they, they were not they did not use uh fit horse gliders when they were entering normandy they just used douglas c47 sky trains and it was not and also, is these two were not part of the instructions. Uh, I looked throughout the instructions; they were those two were not on it. And also, let's compare these two figures. So let me get a British paratrooper and compare it to the U.S. paratroopers. So, if you if you can see the British paratroopers, oh, sorry, I need to, it was a bit dark. But yeah. Uh, they did not have big coats like this guy did, and also they did not have uh, some medi packs or whatever they called it, some supply pack on the top of their head, on to, on top of their helmets because uh, it was not because the Americans just did it, and yeah. So I was act and also the stands, uh, they, uh, they should. I don't understand why Italieri didn't put these in the instructions. I mean. These are clear stands. Uh, I thought it was supposed to do with the windows, but uh, there was no windows that were the same size as these. So I was absolutely confused with Italieri. Uh, why did they include these two figures apart uh, in the sets? And also this guy, uh, when I bought him and I looked and I was doing a look into the book into the box, this guy's foot was not there. So it was a bit of a Bummer, but anyways, at least I got one foot. He he can just be in his foot could be in the bush or somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, in the diorama, but yeah, I was actually a bit annoyed that these two were not in the instructions, and I had to reply. And these were part of the kit. I I'm not saying that is a bad thing, but um, if you want two extra figures, it is okay because these are perfectly decent figures. Yeah, very detailed and yeah. So, so just let me do a few painting techniques. So, uh, this guy, I painted him all over with Humble 83 Ochre, uh, which is basically, uh, which is basically the main US color scheme for paratroopers. His shoes and gloves, I painted Humble 29, even his weapons pack here. His parachute and some uh, essentials at the top, as well as his supply on the helmet is humble 90 there's a line going down to, uh which is basically his paratrooper line i think i'm not sure uh i used humble uh what was the yellow i think it was 69 gloss yellow 61 gloss yellow yeah 61 gloss yellow as his life jacket and then humble 33 for his chin strap and humble 30 green matte green for the helmet and humble 60 wait let me check no 61 is the flesh but 69 is gloss yellow for the life jacket i got it confused for a second but yeah uh, let me just get a british paratrooper so this british paratrooper i used humble 26 all over as the main color scheme then i just dotted on humble 30 and humble 83 ochre the his um uh, his ammunition ch uh his ammunition uh, body body ch body belt uh is basically humble ninety his helmet is humble thirty his sten machine gun is humble thirty but if it's an s m l e then uh, just use humble twenty six his boots are humble thirty three matte black and his Face and hands are basically humble sixty one matte flesh. Um, I did the same thing for these uh, paratroopers with the red, uh, with the red berets. 
Um, I did not have uh, the tinlet red, so I just basically made do with uh, with a red sharpie, which uh, is actually a bit better because it's not because it it just signifies that it's a British paratrooper with a red beret. But yeah, he's basically the commander, so I like him. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, comment down below. Please subscribe. It will mean a lot to me if you did uh, for more reviews. Um, I'm going to be doing a review on my Battle of El Alamein project. Uh, so please stay tuned. Please stay tuned to find out about it. And thanks a lot, guys. And bye.